evening and welcome to the a special meeting for the Scarborough Board of Education. Today is Monday, March 12th. Could I have the attendance, please? Sophia, there's Jasmine here. Sophia, here. Sophia, here. 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 Please join me in the pledge. awkward format. It's always tough to have a workshop um, outside of the town council setting um, for the town council chambers and also have good mics as we experienced at our last meeting. So although we're sitting up here, the idea is that we're going to engage in dialogue um, with the board and with the um, leadership council so they do have some wireless mics down there um, and also could access the podium if the wireless mics are not working well. So I wanted to start off by just doing a brief introduction to open up the conversation and discussion. Our aim in adjusting the school start time schedule in Scarborough was to design a schedule that would increase positive outcomes for all students. We fully anticipated and understood that this would be challenging um, and be a huge change for both our, well, for our entire community. We've spent the good part of this past year working on developing the plan, testing the plan, and thinking about um, the best way to minimize the impact that it would have on our students, our families, um, and our staff. Over the past several months, we've been listening to our community, and we've recognized that there are a variety of perspectives and numerous considerations that this type of change will have on everyone in our community. We've worked alongside our transportation department, our implementation planning committee, teachers, parents, stakeholders, and regional partners in order to, to develop a plan and problem solve in a positive manner. Unfortunately, we've not been able to resolve all of the current issues, and the climate in our community around this issue is untenable. As we continue to listen to our community, we recognize that there are a wide variety of perspectives on all sides of this topic. And we believe that it's time to reevaluate where we are today and think about what is it that we seek to accomplish both in the short term and the long term. Members of our leadership team have come together to discuss how we can move forward. Currently, we see that there's three possible start time options and believe that each one has both pros and cons, benefits and challenges. Option one, we stay the course. We continue with the current plan, start time plan, for the 18-19 school year using our implementation plan as a guide. Option two, we pause implementation completely and maintain our existing schedule as it is today. Option number three, we compromise for the 18-19 school year with an adjusted plan that includes an earlier start for high, uh, a later start for high school and middle school, um, such as like an eight o'clock start time and an eight fifty start time for K <coughs> students. No matter the reasons or the plan, timing and community readiness matters. As a leadership team, we believe that it is time to consider two of these options. With that said, we believe that a complete pause may allow for more time to engage the community. However, we have heard the community and the call for a compromise. Understanding that the final decision is that of the school board, we feel that a pause or a compromise for the 2018-19 school year are both options to be considered. We look forward to an open conversation this evening that is thought for both thought-provoking, and that provides the school board with additional insight from our leadership council members. 
Should the board wish to do something different than our current plan, it is our hope that the final decision may be made sooner than later in order to move our community ahead in a positive direction. And so at this time, I'd like to open up the discussion so that we can together openly, publicly, transparently discuss all three options and the benefits and challenges of each. How, how would the board like to um, proceed? Would you like to take each option that was mentioned and say the kind of thing or do you each have your own thoughts that you'd like to express? Jackie? saying since the beginning that I think we need a compromise and I would like to know what type of a compromise the leadership team is recommending and or the superintendent is recommending. So um, I'll speak generally and then you can ask specific questions of each um, phase level member or department member. So what we have been thinking about is the idea of starting high school and middle school at 8 a.m. We um, have studied our bus stop routes. We have looked at the, length of the duration of each bus route um, as currently planned. Uh, this would allow for us to have a later start for our adolescent students during that most critical time in their brain development, um, while also uh, allowing us to keep our youngest students at a time that seems to be more favorable to the community. So that would be 850 for K-5. So that is no change for our K-2 students. Their current start time on paper is 850, although um, we know that with our current three-tier busing system, it's, um, it's impossible for them to actually start at that time. It's typically like 915. This would be um, the biggest change for our Wentworth families and students. So currently their start time on paper is 820. We do experience challenges um, with our three-tier busing system and starting it right at that time, but then um, this would allow them to start their day, their instructional day at 850. If we did that, what would it look for the two-tier bus system? So that would be with a two-tier bus system. So that would be with that would be with a okay. two-tier bus system. And so one of our current transportation challenges is that we have this three-tier system. And so all of our students currently, high school and middle school, ride the bus together. Okay. Um, and then that has sort of like a ripple effect on how the other days start. So the high school and the middle school is this was, I can talk about the high school and the middle school would start at 8 a.m. but be bus together. How would that work? So they are currently bused together so now. They have like a 10 minute difference in their start times to accommodate that. So what we would do is open the doors 20 minutes prior like we've planned with this plan, which gives us more flexibility for some of the buses that arrive earlier um, or some that can come later. So we would still um, keep the idea of opening the doors 20 minutes before the start of the school year or start of the school day. And that would also help with our K-5 families. One of the challenges that we have talked about um, with our youngest families this year was the idea that I can't be in two places at once if I choose to transport my child. And would that include like, some K-5s being um, combined on buses? Yes, so the, the routes would look similar, would look exactly how they've been shared. The only new information that we have from that is the actual timing of those runs. And currently there are some K-5 students who ride the bus together. Um, may, may we ask a, a principal from each of the phases, uh, tell us briefly how this affects their schedule, the compromise. Um, sure, I'll start. I'm Kelly Crosby. I'm the principal at Wentworth School. I don't know who I should face. Um, oh, stand and face the audience. Thanks, Jackie. Um, great. Hi, everyone. So, um, if this compromise plan is the biggest impact for Wentworth School, but it's no more impact than the original plan was for 2018-19. So, originally, we were going to back up our day by 20 minutes, and now we're under this plan, we would move it forward by 20 minutes. I think some of the benefits of this plan for us is a more predictable arrival and pickup schedule for the buses because 
under a two-tier system uh, with the doors opening 20 minutes before, we can be more guaranteed to actually start our day at 8.50. Our 8.20 start time right now is when the doors are open for students. We don't begin our schedule until after 8.30 on most days. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kelly Martin. I'm the principal at Blue Point School. Um, so, we would not have much of a change um, in terms of the length of our day or the start and end time of our day. Like Kelly said, the benefit would be starting and ending on time. Currently, we are supposed to start at 8.50 in the morning, but we have buses that sort of, we call it a trickle-in effect. So, they come anywhere from um, quarter of eight to a little bit after, or quarter nine to a little bit after nine, and then we have buses that pick up at 3.15 and as late as 3.40. So um, knowing that buses would be um, arriving and picking up on time would really be a benefit and um, would, knowing that we have instructional time rather than kids waiting for all of their peers to arrive to start the day, or hanging around at the end of the day waiting for a bus would be a bit more efficient for kids. <laughs> Kelly, can I just ask, so I just want to clarify that you're saying if you started with a two-tier bus system, if you started at 8.50, you would actually be able to start almost 30 minutes earlier than you currently start? So, just because of the, yeah, we, we, we consider students tardy at, at 9 because all of our students are not reasonably in the building until 9 o'clock because buses are not there until 9 but they should be there at 8.50. Okay. So we still have some that you know drop offs maybe at 9.05. The afternoon time is just an even more of a, an unknown. I have two questions for you and then back to Kelly. Um, I love that you guys are being positive, but are there challenges that you see with this compromise for both, both of you? And then, forgive me because maybe I'm not understanding, but this is only a 15 minute difference. You're feeling confident that they will be there by 8.50, or is that including the 20 minute window? The, the intent would be for the instructional day to start promptly at 8 a.m. for high school and middle school and 8.50 for K-5. So doors would open at 7.40 for the high school and doors would open at 8.30 for our K-5 schools. And so yes, in terms of transportation, that additional 20 minutes on either side does help us ensure um, that we're able to start the day right on time. And our most recent analysis and testing of the runs we, um, we have our, our average bus run at K-5 is 37 minutes. Currently, under our three-tier busing system, the average bus run is 29 minutes. And so it is, they are, the buses are being used more efficiently and some of the runs are um, longer. But we do believe that this would allow us to start promptly at 8.50 and 8 o'clock. And did we do a two-tier when we did the early release? <laughs> no, we did not. We did not, but we spaced them out in the same way that the two tier would be. Yes. Um, so challenges. We know that we wanted to have our K two kids a little earlier. Um, so I guess one of one of my worries is that uh, saturation point of the community with this topic and. Um, will we be able to move forward with continuing to pursue that? If we compromise now, can we continue to look at that option for kids, or are we going to be kind of stay put with that for a long time? Because I think we do lose our K2 kids at around 2 o'clock, um, and we are putting something on Wentworth that was not there before. Um, so I think in looking at what's ideal for all kids, that is a worry. I think we do need a compromise, and I think it's a reasonable compromise, 
but I guess that's a question that we have to ask ourselves as a larger community. It's one step, what's the next step? Similarly, for Wentworth, I think it's two things that are challenges um, off, the, off the top of my head. One is that we've planned all year with the staff really thoroughly to um, move to the plan as stated for the 18-19 plan. So this is a shift for us in our thinking and um, kind of going back to the drawing board on some things, which we're up for that challenge if that's what, um, if that's what is decided tonight. And the second is similar to Kelly, that we were also looking forward to an earlier start time for our students and then really maximizing that morning instructional time. But again, it's a challenge that we're up for um, and we'll work through if it's in the best interest of all of our kids. Can we hear from the middle school and high school? Hi, I'm Diane Neto. I'm the principal at the middle school. Um, in terms of looking at the compromise and the time difference, um, we currently start at 7.45, and so an 8 o'clock start would really be minimal for us. Um, you know, there were a lot of concerns with the proposed start time on the part of the community in regards to how that would affect our student athletes and their need to um, sometimes be let out of school early for games um, by pushing our schedule only 15 minutes. Um, that would be pretty much um, on a rare occasion because we would be ending our school day at 2.30. Um, there really aren't many places at all um, that we would have to go to that our students would need to leave before 2.34. And so that would eliminate that piece. The other piece that would be eliminated um, that was a potential concern around um, the original change in start times is um, the way that we would look at our advisory block, which we call crew, um, we were going to need to shift that to the end of the day to minimize the impact of the loss of instruction for our athletes. And again, by just shifting our day 15 minutes, um, that wouldn't be necessary and we would be able to have it um, in a time during the day that we think is really best um, for all of our students. Hi, I'm David Creech. I'm the principal of the high school. Um, at the high school, we have a number of reasons that are similar to some that you just heard a minute ago from Diane from the middle school. Uh, we've had a lot of feedback from our staff and from our school leaders, and it starts with this provides a compromise for our school community, which we thought was extremely important. As Diane mentioned, our A East advisory program currently is between the first and second blocks. That's a model that it took us two and a half years to develop in high school, and it's a best practices model. Moving it to the end of the day because of uh, students having to leave because of athletics would have compromised that. So an 8 o'clock start would allow us to keep the advisory in the East program, ideally where it should be between blocks one and two. After school activities would not be impacted. Uh, we wouldn't have to have students missing instructional time during the day because they're being released to have to go to athletic contests. Uh, the locational schedule will now be more closely aligned to the sending schools. Uh, after job, after school jobs for our students and our staff that are currently in place wouldn't be significantly impacted as the original plan would. Coaches in our district and coaches that coach outside the district uh, would not be negatively impacted by this. This schedule would align more closely to Cumberland and, and York County High Schools with their school start times. Um, our shared resources the vocational schools, the athletic schedules, the after school activities would be more aligned with those schools. After school care would be in place for our students who would be able to leave and go home and either take care of their siblings or take care of members of the community or neighbors. That would still be in place. And the final piece that we have as a, as a school group was families are able to make minor adjustments to their schedule with less impact to their existing perfectly clear that I firmly believe in the science of starting school later for our high school and middle school students. 
However, I believe the upheaval is not good for our students. That's why I have wanted a compromise. I also want you to know that although I opposed the original start times in the beginning, when it came to a vote, I did support it so that it would be a unanimous vote of the school board because I firmly believe that the board needs to support the policies that we put in place. I now think it's time for a compromise and I would ask that we could move that forward.
really is going to be a huge asset to our community in getting our students to school on time. And this compromise allows us to maintain that. That was a big part of the planning and then testing the plan and analyzing the data that occurred in this in this past time frame. Um, and then as uh, Principal Creech and, like, and Mr. Legage said, it's really just tweaking that implementation plan that was recently shared with our community. And our aim would be to be able to turn that around in the next couple of weeks so that you'll have you know, that solid document to guide our decisions or to share our thinking and our decisions. Mary? Yeah. Can I ask, like, regarding the busing, will there be an op opportunity to like do a trial run on the bus system to see how it goes, you know, you know moving to the two tier? So we've been testing it for the last month, and that was part of the work that I did just this past week with our transportation supervisor. <coughs> Sarah's here. She? Um, oh, I see her hiding over there. <laughs> So Sarah and our bus drivers have been testing these runs, the K2 runs. The high school runs stay the same. Um, they're still combined. We looked at ridership. The one thing that would shift for high school and middle school is that rather than getting to a bus stop at 6.25 or 6.35 or 6.40 like our students are now, they'll be going to bus stops at, um, their, their bus stop rather, their pickup will be around 7.15, 7.20, um, some 7.10 because their routes are much shorter, just given the ridership. We use all 19 of our buses for our high school and middle school run currently. And you know they have, on an 84 passenger bus, we can have 71 high school and middle schoolers, and most of them have 60 kids, 50 kids currently. So um, those, those routes would stay virtually the same. We would just be shifting them. So of course, we'd be mindful of traffic patterns in towns and adjust accordingly to that. And then the K-5 runs have been tested. That's what we were doing during the month of January and February. And so you would have, like, you know, how long each run would be, like, so you have that information? Yeah, we have all of that information. We have the minimum run, the maximum run, the average run, and then each, each bus stop we know um, how the ridership will shift and um, how long that ride will take. What's the minimum and maximum run for the different phase levels? So currently at the middle school and high school, the minimum run is 15 minutes, the maximum run is 37 minutes, and the average run is 25 minutes, plus or minus you know, five minutes on any given day, weather depending and traffic depending. At our K-5, um, on our K-5 runs currently, our minimum run is 18 minutes, our maximum run is 38-ish minutes, and our, um, our average run is about 29 minutes. With the two-tier busing system, the minimum run becomes 22, or 20 minutes rather, the maximum run becomes 49, and the average run becomes 37 in, at K-5. And so to give an example, because one of the things I've heard is that our youngest students will be on the bus for two hours a day. Um, I would use my own child as an example. So we live in Scarborough, and her bus stop in the morning, she would be on the longest, one of the, the longest runs. Um, so her bus stop in the morning, she would get picked up. Um, a, this is with our current time, so I would have to adjust to think forward. But she'd be one of the first pickups in the morning. So she'd have a long bus run, it'd be about 40 minutes. But in the afternoon, she'd be one of the first drop-offs. Um, we also live close enough to Blue Point School that, she, that we could walk to school on days that are nice um, or, or drive her ourselves. So we have those options. But the idea, I guess my point in giving that specific personal example is that you won't, your child wouldn't have a longer run, a long run in the morning and the afternoon because typically they're in burst on the way home. So it might be short in the morning and longer on the afternoon or vice versa um, for most of the bus runs. Uh, give the minimum, maximum, and average with the new system for the 6012? It would stay the same. The routes stay the same because they're already all on the same bus. Gotcha. Uh, did you say, did I miss the? Uh, what time would the first high school pickup, middle school, high school pickup be with the compromise plan right now? They're about 6.35, I think. So, we did not actually go through and determine what they would be with the compromise plan yet. That if that's the will of the board, we'll go back and analyze that. But if we were to have, um, if we were to look 
at an 8 o'clock start currently, it would be around 7.15, 7.20. But we can get more specific with that once we know if it compromises the flow of the board. And I'd also like to know if there would be any buses before 7 for the that group too. For the high school and middle school? Yeah. No. We can confidently say that. We can confidently say that because our minimum, our maximum run is 37 minutes. And so if you just work backwards from 8 o'clock, um, we, we would not have to have anyone at a bus stop that early. Could, could clarify? Could, so if the, if, the current, if the start time is at 8 o'clock, you're going to have to get the middle school to the middle school first. Or vice versa, or the high school to the high school first, and then drop. Well, so, so wouldn't that add like ten extra minutes to any bus run? So remember that doors are going to open twenty minutes before the start of the day. So we could be dropping off as early as seven forty at the middle school and or the high school. And one of the things we have to consider with the middle school is the bottleneck of traffic, as you all know, when you go to drop your child off, or um, if you're a staff member even trying to get through at that time of day. Because we only have like, one way in around that loop and out, um, we would want to stagger probably. One idea that Sarah and I just tested the other day was what if we staggered and we dropped off some, some kids at the middle school first and some kids at the high school first so we weren't having that log jam there at the middle school. So those are some of the things that we would test out and we would look at if this becomes um, you know, the best step moving forward. When, you, when we started, you, you, you said that there were three options. Did the leadership team uh, support one over the other? Would you guys like to speak to that? So initially when we, we met a couple of times last week to talk about this because we were concerned about the community and the impact it was starting to have on our schools and our staff um, and we were worried about that impacting our students. Um, so initially when we chatted um, our feeling was really the option of keeping everything just the way it is right now because I think the spirit of our conversation at that time was, you know, we need to just take a step back. We need to really send a clear message to the community that we hear you and that uh, there's no perfect solution right now, but we really need to take a pause. Now that is also not a perfect solution, as we've said tonight, because there are people who have made plans there are people who have already set up things in preparation for something to change. So I know that that's not a perfect solution. So only you guys can weigh from the feedback from what you hear tonight after people hear these options um, and really listen to what people say. You are going to have to make that decision. I guess our message was stop and listen. I know that today was the first day for people registering and non refundable. Is there an opportunity for that money to go back if they don't need to have travel care? Yes, I had the opportunity to speak with community services today. Um, and if we make a plan that is different in families who have registered today, I believe there was 113 families who registered this morning, um, if their child care needs shift because our schedule has shift, um, the town and community services is willing to be flexible and refund those monies for people who would no longer need that service. And then, of course, knowing that would open up opportunities for families who do need the service who may not yet registered. Thank the superintendent for having that foresight to check with community services on the child care. Thank you. I have a comment. 
We're going to have public comment in a little bit. Great. Is there anyone else from the Leadership Council who did not get a chance to speak yet that wanted to add something about our current thinking? Great, so we will move on to 6.0 public comment. If you guys wanted to come right up to the podium, uh, state your name, address, Everyone will have three minutes to speak on the topic at hand. We'll start with 30 minutes. So if we can keep the applause to a minimum, that would be greatly appreciated. 
And if you could keep your comments to start times, please. Hi, I'm Betsy Chalmers. Um, I live at 17 Fairway Drive, and I'm a parent of a seventh grader at the middle school. Um, and I also work as an ed tech here at Wentworth School. Um, and I just want to say that I, I appreciate your hard work on the proposed start times. And I feel like um, while well, the compromise seems like it's what's best for the community right now, compromising ignores the scientific research that says that our kids really need to be starting after 8.30. So I hope you take that into consideration. Hi, my name is Andrea Byron. I live at Three Homer Sands Drive. And I have a son who's going to be entering kindergarten. Um, and I. I am so impressed that you have done such thorough research. I think that the idea of stopping moving forward in some capacity really allows the disruption in our town to kind of win, which bothers me. I think that you've been working on this for a long time. I hope that whether it is a compromise or a complete overhaul of the start times and going back to what you initially uh, planned, I, I hope that we don't let this stall the progress in our town in this area and many others. So thank you very much for your time and hard work. Hi, my name is Leah Devo. I live at 15 Moomore Drive and I'm a junior at the high school. I really want to thank you for opening the discussion to start times again and allowing us to comment. I really appreciate the time that's been spent working to improve our schedules, but I think that the consequences from a really late start time will outweigh the benefits. I'm in two AP classes and all other honors classes, so I really value the time before and after school that I can use to get help from my teachers. And right now the doors open for students around 7 or 7.05 and we start at 7.35. So next year if the doors only open 20 minutes before, we're going to lose some of that time. So I was wondering if we could reconsider that and open it for longer so that we can get that time before school. And I believe that if we were to compromise or the same, that would be better for A East because A East is really important to get help before your classes from teachers and to study before the tests that you have. And if they're at the end of the day, then we have to choose between academic help or extracurricular activities. And also, late start times don't take into consideration uh, activities outside of school that can't change when they're going to start just because one school changed their start time. Um, <coughs> lastly, I understand that not every student is in this situation, but I'm a swimmer, so I get up for practice at 5.15 in the morning. So a late start time won't really help me because I'll be having to get up at the same time anyway and then staying up later to do homework and get things done at night. So thank you. Hi, my name is Scott Hardy. Um, I live in South Portland, but I have raised two daughters who have gone through the entire Scarborough school system here. And, uh, and I lived here for most of my parenting years too. Um, so, uh, I wanted to first say that, um, first I, I uh, support the board 100%, I think you guys are working really hard, it's, it's a difficult, you know, it's difficult times, difficult topic, big change, so anyway, I applaud you for, for staying the course and really doing your best, um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, I want to echo what, what Jackie said about the science, and that I'm a, I'm a firm believer in the science, and, and really... I think what, where this issue was born was around the health concerns of our adolescents. So, like Jackie, I support the science 100%. Like Jackie, also, I'm in favor of compromise. The only challenge that I personally have is that we're starting at a place of compromise where we're saying, you know, that we're looking at the minimum recommendation from the Academy, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics, which says that you, know, that you shouldn't have a start time earlier than 8.30 for adolescents for, for healthy, mental, physical um, life of these kids. So if we're starting with a compromise, I don't think we can go below that number because that is the minimum that the pediatric body of the United States of America says that we should meet for the health of our kids. So I would just say that. And thank you. Bye. Deborah Hugh Sherman, uh, 15 Fairway Drive. 
Um, I have also um, put out emails asking for a compromise, but I must also say, um, as a physician, I totally appreciate your years of work on studying this issue. Um, pretty much every medical society and some national societies, including the National Institute of Health, um, has set that a 30 deadline as what's important for the mental and physical health of our children. Change is hard, and I remember when we went to full day kindergarten here, I have two kids, one in college and one a senior in high school, um, so I could have easily avoided this conflict and stayed home. <laughs> Um, but when we went from um, part to full day kindergarten, there was a big ruckus in town. Um, and that only affected one grade. Um, so affecting all these grades, I don't envy the board's position whatsoever. I'm also as a physician know how it is to give bad news or bad you know, advice that people don't want to hear, like screening colonoscopies. Screening colonoscopies are not pleasant. They're super inconvenient and they're expensive. But the body of evidence shows that it saves lives. And so people don't like to hear that when I recommend it. It's the right thing to do. Um, so I hope that over this year or over the next two years, we can get to that start time that is recommended by everyone. No society says that we should leave it the way it is, even if it's convenient for some. I know that for both of my kids, it would be different from my oldest. An earlier start time when she was little would have been really hard because she was born a night owl. Um, my other one, not so bad. When they got to middle school and into the high school, boy, I wish they could have had a late start. I know it would have helped their physical and mental well-being. My kid took AP classes. She usually got about five hours of sleep at night because she didn't want to give kind of hard work. Um, there's a lot of kids like that, and I think we have to focus on academics and, you know, try and figure out the sports thing and the after-school thing, but we're a school system. We need to think about our kids' <coughs> academic um, and mental health and their physical health, and that's what I have to say. Thank you. Krista Zbaznik. I uh, live in Freeport, but I work at this wonderful Scarborough High School, and um, I feel like I live at 11 Municipal Drive lately. Um, on February 15th, three board members came on a listening tour to the high school. We welcomed them, Ms. Leifer, Ms. Kaslionis, and Ms. Beely. We had the opportunity to share our concerns on February 15th outlining research, background, experience from our experience as teachers, from experience as parents. We had plenty of thoughtful information that we shared. And I know that the listening tour also was at every one of the schools over the past couple of months, which was a great idea to listen. However, when we asked, when I asked, if compromise that actually was my question. I believe it's in the minutes. Is compromise an option? Are you willing to be the heroes and compromise? It was clear that your team was not ready then. And I asked myself after the following day, learning that our beloved Principal Creech would not have his contract renewed. I asked myself, was this connected? Or was it just a coincidence? How is it possible that we are here today if you have truly been willing to compromise, willing to listen? This is what we've needed for a long time. Thank you for starting now. My name is Alicia Giftis. I live in Chew Saratoga Lane. I'm 
I'm going to say probably the same thing that she just said, except not as nicely. <laughs> as I prepared this statement, I wondered if my audience should really be the Board of Education. Although you are forced to listen to me because of this process, I know you won't consider my thoughts. How do I know that? Because the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And you've demonstrated an unwillingness to listen to me, to us, at all. Therefore, although I'm here speaking to you, the people I hope hear me are the individuals of our community wondering why so many of us are upset. Tonight, with little notice, you've called a special meeting to discuss school start times. People have opposed your changes for months now, and you've ignored them until now. Tonight, it seems like you have two choices, and I'm, now you said three, this was me predicting today. And unfortunately, neither choice leads to my support because your rationale is so flawed. Number one, you could pass the school start time changes. This option is obviously problematic because the community widely opposes school start time changes. It's problematic because there are still unresolved issues. And it's problematic because our schools are already reeling from the poorly implemented proficiency-based learning system. The thought of mismanaging another huge change in our schools is frightening. Number two, you could compromise. So to those individuals wondering why I would be upset with a compromise when I've been asking for one, let me tell you why I don't think this is okay. I've asked for a compromise. You've ignored me. The community has asked for a compromise. You've ignored them. The majority of your staff members, your staff members, have implored you to consider compromise a month ago. You ignored them. Principal Creech supported those staff members in their quest for compromise. Not only did you ignore him, you got rid of him. And when, finally when, does it seem a compromise on the table? According to the Leadership Council tonight, it was last week. After three of your board members faced recall only when it matters to you. Not us, not our kids, not our faculty, not our beloved principal, who you've treated without dignity and displaced from our school, without our consent. are wrong. And I'd like to highlight the fact that the superintendent tonight focuses again on her agenda for a, a bit guide of, of compromise when the leadership team is asking for a delay. And that's the same request that this, the faculty made on February 15th when Principal Creech was asked to resign. Other than start times, I'm leaving.
It was this same school board that last April voted to approve a time change that would affect every phase level without waiting for the results of the bus audit. You had the opportunity to slow down then and you chose not to, which honestly was incompetent at best. While I appreciate the compromise, I no longer trust this board's decision-making ability when it comes to doing what is best for all students. Okay. I'm Jenny Jubilis. I live at 16 Haystack Circle, and I'm the parent of a first grader at Pleasant Hill. And I want to thank you for trying to come to a compromise tonight, um, and thank you as well for your service to the community. It's really been a very challenging month for our town. Um, I think some of the challenges that have arisen have come from difficulties with communication and I have heard it said that those of us against the proposed original proposed plan for start times do not believe in the science and I want to say that for the vast majority of us that is not the case just like Jackie said I'm a pediatrician I spend most of my day analyzing medical evidence and I support wholeheartedly later start times for adolescents but I also support CDC recommendations for hours of sleep for our youngest children, 10 to 13 hours a night. And I'm acutely aware that there is almost no data about ideal start times for young children. My professional organization, the American Academy of Pediatrics, issues guidelines after, six, after a significant review of the medical literature. But there are often parts of guidelines where there is either no hard data or there is weak data. And at this point, the authors of the guidelines will say that the resulting recommendation relies on expert opinion. This is where we find ourselves when it comes to start times for our youngest children. I've heard educators describe their experience with youngsters, that they perform better earlier in the day, and that is certainly one expert opinion, and it may be true, but we cannot know this with certainty. And we cannot discount what happens beyond the school day, particularly for our youngest children. Parents are another type of expert. We know our children, and what I am hearing and personally experiencing is significant concern around earlier and longer bus rides and longer days. What many of us as parents are arguing is that success for a young child goes beyond academics and development encompasses more than school performance. Without adequate sleep, as anyone with a young child can tell you, behavior will deteriorate. Speaking from experience, a sleep-deprived child may be able to function in one area adequately, such as academics, while deteriorating in other areas, such as social interaction, motivation, and self-regulation. I'm worried when we say younger children are better able to learn early in the morning, we're ignoring these non-academic areas, and time out of school. Some of our children, mine included, would have significantly longer days as a result of the initial proposed change, and will struggle to get to bed in the adequate time for their sleep needs. This is due to the early bus schedule. I believe high school should start later, but I agree with the middle ground and the compromise. Ideally, we would delay this implementation altogether, but ideally, and ideally high school would not start until after 8.30, but unfortunately we do not live in a perfect world, and we cannot let perfect be, um, be the enemy of good. Thank you. There's been a lot of talk lately in this community about how the school board isn't listening to people. Um, I want to say that I'm also part of this community and I absolutely support the later start times. I think the science is unequivocal. There is absolutely no question that starting after 8.30 is ideal for our teenagers. There, that recommendation is with the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, the CDC, the National Teacher, Parent Teachers Association, all support an 8.30 start time. We heard from principals of both Wentworth and the elementary schools who are disappointed that they're not going to have the younger kids early on in the day because they're missing out on educational time. I understand what a struggle it is for people to rearrange schedules and do things for the younger children. My husband is gone 18 days a month. I had to give up my career so that I could be home part-time with my kids. I get it, it's really hard, but at the end of the day, the science <coughs> shows that for our children, these start times are more appropriate for them. I understand this decision is not just about the science, it's also about emotions and people's lives. I get that. 
but I would really encourage the board that if you do a compromise, please try to come up with some kind of process so that we can ultimately get to what's better for our children. I also want to say that I'm very thankful that we have a school board who is willing to make tough decisions that are certainly not increasing their invitations to parties in this town. Uh, it can't be easy to sit up there and have people criticizing you and saying that you're not doing what's best for our children. I absolutely believe, knowing that you've been working on this from at least 2014, that this has been in discussions, that you have analyzed the information and you're doing what you think is best for our children. So I Hello, my name is Jason McGovern. I live in 14 Square Lane. Um, three issues I want to bring up quickly. The first one is an issue that really I haven't heard addressed, uh, is the issue of bullying on our school buses. I can remember times when my son Ryan would come home uh, from a bus ride and ask me what a certain word meant, and physically I could actually not speak the word that he asked me, and I asked him where he told me, when I asked him where, and I asked him where he heard it, he told me I heard it on the bus. I'm concerned that currently, as it stands right now, uh, this community doesn't really have a good handle on school, bu school bullying, I mean bullying on the bus, and that by switching to a two-phase instead of a three-phase three -phase busing schedule was only going to exacerbate the problem, especially for the younger kids who are going to be picked on by the fourth and fifth graders. Um, secondly is, I've heard a lot, especially from Superintendent Kruckenberger today, about outcomes. Um, as a parent, I'd like to know specifically what those outcomes that are anticipated are. Um, specifically, like what areas where school is currently suffering, where we're going to see a benefit, and some estimate of what the what the actual impact is going to be on our kids. Uh, lastly, is a lot of people talk about science, and I wholeheartedly agree that we need to talk about it. But we need to talk about all the science, and that includes the science on whether or not what is a good sleep time for the K through five, which is something that really hasn't been addressed and really acknowledged publicly, as well as the issue on behavioral impact on adolescent sleep time, as well as the whole idea of how decision fatigue factors into the issue of um, attention span for both the younger kids and the older ones. Thank you. So we're just about at the 30 minute mark, so why don't we just say that Mr. Bennett at the end there will be our last speaker. We'll get through the, the folks that are in line. <laughs> certified pediatrician. I live at 7 Evergreen Farms Road and I have two children in the Scarborough Public School System. One at Eight Corners and one at Wentworth. I wanted to publicly express my support for the school start time changes. I would like to commend the school board and their superintendent for basing this decision on the best available scientific research to date. The AAP released a policy in 2014 recommending that all middle and high school students start no earlier than 8.30. Cited in this policy was a study by the National Sleep Foundation. It found that 59% of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders and 87% of high school students are getting less than the recommended 8.5 hours to 9.5 hours of sleep on school nights. In this study, the average amount of sleep obtained by high school students' seniors was less than 7 hours. They also found that the parents were often unaware of their child's sleep requirements and deficits with 71% of parents believing their children were obtaining an adequate amount of sleep. There have been numerous studies looking at the impact of chronic sleep deprivation on students and children, many of them finding increasing rates of cardiovascular disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and mental health problems such as anxiety, depression, and suicidal ideation. Early start times for students have also been associated with increased car accidents. Studies looking specifically at this risk have found a 50 to 70% reduction associated with later school start time. After implementation of later start time, schools have seen improved attendance and, gradua and graduation rates, which can directly affect state funding for the school district. Some parents have asked, does delaying the start time result in the students obtaining more sleep, or do they just stay up later? Overall, the studies have found no shift to a later bedtime for the students. And as a result, students obtain nearly an additional hour of sleep on school nights. Parents have also expressed concerns about the impact of early start times for our younger students. Unfortunately, there's limited data on this topic. Recently, two cross-sectional studies published after the AAP recommendations 
have suggested that early start times may result in lower standardized scores and increased behavior incidents for elementary students. I would like to point out that the school start times in these studies range from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and almost 50% of the elementary schools included in the study started before our new elementary start time of 8 a.m. Additionally, because of their design, these two studies do not prove that early start times cause the poor behavior outcomes and lower standardized scores, and they do not convince me to change my support for the new school start times. After spending a year and a half, it appears the board and superintendent have diligently tried to find a balance minimizing the impact of school start times on busing transportation needs, athletics, vocational students, and student employment. And I feel they have weighed the negative impacts and see the overall benefit to the health and well-being of our middle and high school students. I would strongly encourage families that still have concerns about the impact of school start times on their child's health to speak with their medical provider. They may be able to offer solutions to minimize any effects due to the change in start times. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Steve Transolito. I'm a uh, social studies teacher at the high school. Um, I've been teaching for 25 years. I've had the honor of being a town employee for the past 10 years at Scarborough. I've enjoyed the students and the staff and the families of this town immensely uh, as an instructor. Uh, two quick comments, just regarding the late start time, first thing. Um, I went to all the meetings last year, a year ago. I was impressed and um, just totally uh, in awe of bravery and the conviction of Jackie Perry and Thomas Bashan, who consistently, a year ago, a uh, history teacher I remember the past, were the only two voices of reason, of intelligence, of, of understanding the whole, all the sides of the issue, particularly from the student's perspective, from the educator's perspective. Uh, I'm also a parent myself. I live at 15 Cranbrook Drive in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. I don't live in Scarborough, but I have a high school junior, uh, so I understand the parent's point of view regarding education. I certainly understand a little bit of the student's perspective, and I definitely understand the educator's perspective. But getting back real quickly, I know the time is short. A year ago, that could have been resolved then. Instead, I remember leaving the last meeting completely blown away and thinking to myself, this is not over. And in the last year, um, we've seen a number of um, decisions that have been made. Currently, we are now seeing some compromising being made, which I am very pleased, and I, and I thank you for that. But in the words of Lincoln, uh, who famously said at Gettysburg, uh, government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. And quite frankly, policies regarding uh, modifying now the hybrid, uh, the late start, we're kind of the glacial pace is picking up. And my last comment is, if you really want to respect the will of the people and do what's um, expected as town officials is to respect the community of the high school, which is 150% behind David Creech. Woo!
and not heard anything. I am so saddened of what has happened to the town, and I know I'm a big part of that. For that, I apologize to the town, but I have no idea what other recourse there is. It's the democratic process. Because I felt that we hadn't been heard before, we followed the democratic process and we still are. And there's one last item that has everybody so fired up. You need to hear us one last time tonight, please. We don't know all of the story. The high school principal has been vilified through innuendo, speculation. The bottom line is, so many people in this town are in support of that high school principal. You've got a high school full of students who support him. You've got 100% of the students support that guy. You've got 100% just about the staff supporting him. I don't know what it's going to take folks to hear us, but we're on that track right now. Thank you. Nutterway. Um, this is my 15th year in Scarborough and um, I came to the school we're meeting last month and I have never seen anything like it. And it was shocking and upsetting and um, as a career educator myself, I've been in education 19 years, 16 years as a faculty member and now three in administration. Um, I just could not believe what was going on. So I came here tonight uh, to exhort the board and the superintendent to show strong leadership and compromise. And I'm so happy to say that you're doing it. Um, so I was so, I was just relieved to hear the compromise proposal um, because I think it does show that even between, was that February 15th and tonight, there's been important communication going on and listening. And so I really appreciate that. Um, I know that your goals um, as school board members and superintendent and mine as an educator are, are to focus on the outcomes that we're looking for, expanding educational opportunity, increasing student success, those are the things that I do every day in my job, um, and there's nothing more important for this group. This is the idea behind school start times and proficiency-based education, and I don't want to talk about proficiency-based education, but I want to say something a little bigger, which is that sometimes in the course of trying to do the right thing, which is to respect the research around adolescent start, to adolescent um, sleep schedules, uh, we get caught up in the fact that we don't live in a perfect world, and our conversations are driven by the budget and transportation, the number of buses we have, um, rather than by that that outcome. But we can't pretend that we don't face those challenges, and so. When we start having similar conversations about proficiency-based education, I think we all need to realize how expensive it is to make these changes. Um, if we weren't so concerned about our transportation costs and the number of buses we had, we could actually start the elementary school children at earlier times. Um, we wouldn't have to be arguing about the transportation schedule and 49 minutes on a bus instead of 30 minutes on a bus. A couple more buses would make this conversation so much easier. So I'm probably going to the choir since you're all here. <laughs> um, but I just want to say that we have gotten bogged down in, in things that have to do with money rather than things that have to do with the best educational outcomes. And I'm short on time, but Proficiency-based education is not going to be any different. It's going to be very expensive to implement it. We should implement it, but it will take revising our whole assessment, our whole teaching and learning, our pedagogy. It works well at Casco Bay High School because they have built their entire school around it. 
And so um, that's the end of my time. Thank you very much. Hi folks, I'm, I'm Ben Farino. I'm an internist in town and I've been uh, in Scarborough for about 20 years now. I've had four kids go through the, through the school system. My last is a junior in high school this year. So I, I got here a little bit late because I was coming from a meeting, but I was I was concerned because I, I wasn't sure if any physician colleagues would get up here. So thank you, those of you who spoke. Um, I just, yeah, a couple things. I, I don't have much to add because they spoke so eloquently, but um, I think I've heard some people quote the American Academy of Pediatrics. They um, quoted my sort of more my line. I'm an internist, so I see most of the adults, and I see adolescents sort of at the end of this um, process. But it's not just the American Academy of Pediatrics. It's the American Medical Association. It's the American Academy of uh, Psychiatry. It's the uh, National Sleep Association. There's not equivocation. Some of it may be expert opinion. I heard one of my pediatric colleagues get up and say that, but not all of it. Um, and there's no debate. There is no debate um, that 8.30 start times are medically healthy for our adolescents. I'm going to just say a couple of things. And this, is, this is from the American Academy of Pediatrics. These are the, these are the impacts of, of chronic sleep deprivation in our adolescents on their health. Um, increased obesity risk, type 2 diabetes risk, hypertension risk, increased rates of motor vehicle crashes, higher rates of caffeine consumption, non-medical use of stimulant medications, lower levels of physical activity, increased risk of anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, poor impulse control and self-regulation, increased risk-making behaviors, emotional dysregulation, impaired interpretation of social and emotional cues in self and others, decreased motivation, increased vulnerability to stress, cognitive deficits, especially with more complex tasks, impairments in executive function, memory, organization, time management, impairments in attention and memory, deficits in abstract thinking, decreased performance, lower academic achievement, poor school attendance, increased dropout rates. So the data is the data, and I think we've sort of, it sounds like we've come to some compromise. I think that was presented before I got here. But I just wanted to commend the school board and, and uh, Julie on, on leading this change. This is really hard. I think I heard one of the doctors talk about change being really hard. But it is the right thing to do, and that's, and that's, that's, a, that's not equivocal. Uh, just a couple of things. I heard one of the students talk about AP courses. So my son took five AP courses his senior year. And uh, his first uh, period AP course, AP teacher, um, had a nickname for my son. He called him Better Late Than Never. It's because he couldn't get up. He couldn't get to those. And he wasn't, it didn't matter, those five AP courses. He was going to bed at the same time before he had AP courses. So I think the sort of, uh, the, the data is there. So even though in those two AP courses, you can do it. And later start times might actually benefit you. Um, but lastly, and, and, then I'll, and then I'll give up. So I, I don't think actually disagreements by the town. I may be in the minority here, but I don't think, I think disagreements lead to a vibrant town. I think discourse divides a town. If you don't treat people respectfully, if you don't listen to people, if you point your fingers at people, and you, that's what divides a town. That's what divides a town. It's not disagreement. Disagreement in my field is vibrant. We, in fact, I I'm one of the medical leaders in my group. I actually pick people to be part of my part of my leadership group that disagree with me. It's vibrant. But we are respectful to each other. When we make a decision, we agree with each other, and we go forward and lead that decision. And we might punch each other in the face, and we might pull each other's hair out in those meeting rooms. But once this decision is made, we go forward. So please, if I could plead with one thing for the town, it's not to just have disagreements with the board, that's a good thing. But let's have good conversation and good discourse. And let's treat each other respectfully. Thank you. Hi, I'm Amy Topshake of Three Grace Circle, and I'm a sophomore at Scarborough High School. I keep on hearing you all talk about what's best for the kids, but with all due respect, most of you are adults and you truly don't know. Well, I am, and let me explain it from my viewpoint. 
So, I'm an extremely busy student. Between AP and honors classes, competitive dance, and too many extracurriculars to count, I have absolutely no time to hold a steady job. However, I'm a teenager and I want money. So, I babysit, and depending on the week, after school, I'll watch children two to three times a week. Um, their parents are even more busy than I am, so I'm often a huge help to the families. Yes, aftercare is an option, but I'm a way cheaper option. And also, not to my own horn, but I'm an awesome babysitter, and the kids would rather hang out with me than stay at school for extra hours to go to aftercare. Next year, if the late starter times are implemented, all this will be ruined. The children I babysit will get out of school before me, and I'll have no possible way to watch them. Not only will this destroy my source of income, but it will be an immense burden on the lives of the families I help. Some can simply not afford aftercare, and some of the parents I've talked to are even considering moving to a different district if this change is implemented. And even if they can afford aftercare, their children do not want to stay at school for extra hours when we are already here for such a long time. In the end, I hope you all consider how this change will directly impact the lives of students of all ages. I'm a student. I can't vote. But I'm a student. This affects me and my peers more than anyone else. Why are the adults making this decision? If you truly represent us, please maintain the current schedule. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I did not plan this segue, but she pretty much led me right to my point. Um, I'm Amy Moore. I'm from uh, I'm 15 Wild Rose Lane. So I have a question, observation regarding the later, later dismissal of the high school students in comparison to the younger children and how this will affect the services that community service provides for aftercare. Um, our Scarborough High School students have had meaningful employment engaged with our Scarborough youth and this I fear will be severely compromised with school time change. Um, she just said it all. Um, so <laughs> I do hope that we are looking at that, um, that impact as well. Thanks. Hi, my name is Elena Dunn Hoffman. I'm at 12 Libby Street in Scarborough. I'm the mother of a kindergartner. My name is Fiona. And I wasn't planning on speaking today, but I wanted to make sure that there was enough voice on behalf of our youngest kids. Um, <clears throat> I've heard a lot about the research regarding sleep and adolescence, and that all sounds sound. And um, it sounds, I mean, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a medical professional, but it sounds like valid research that we need to listen to. My hope is that we can find a, a plan and a solution that will help our adolescents get the sleep that they need without adversely affecting our younger kids. Um, just my own personal example, and I know that my daughter is just one child, but I've spoken to many parents, many friends, and they feel very similarly that um, the youngest kids who need so much sleep, I mean my daughter you know, she sleeps 12, 12 and a half hours at night, so we start bedtime at 6.30 p.m. to get her in bed. That's including, you know, stories and snuggles. She's in bed by 7, and she sleeps until 7.30, sometimes 7.45 in the morning. And as it is, as Principal Lovejoy can attest to, <laughs> it is often a struggle for me to get my daughter to school to the 9 o'clock start time because I do so value her sleep. And I know when she doesn't get the sleep that she needs, she falls apart. She might not fall apart at school, but she will absolutely fall apart at home. And I really appreciated um, earlier a pediatrician spoke to that. Um, so what I want to say is just, uh, I want to be a voice for our youngest kids. Our, our youngest kids need sleep too. Our youngest kids need to be healthy too. And how can we find a solution that's not going to so adversely affect them, and I just, I haven't heard, I feel like I haven't heard enough voice on their behalf, and so I wanted to get up here and add my voice, <laughs> so. I'm Rachel Gillette, 
Kaczynski. I live at Four Berkeley Court in Scarborough. I have um, three children, one at Wentworth, third grader. I have a first grader at Blue Point, and I'll have a kindergartner starting Blue Point next fall. Um, so I, too, want to advocate for the younger kids. Um, my kids are, and always have been, early risers. They are up at 6.30, uh, or by 6.30 almost every day. We're both work, my husband and I both work full time. So we have to, have always had to get out of the door pretty early and get them to daycare or whatever the situation was at the time for us. And my son was recently diagnosed with social anxiety disorder. So he gets up at 6 or 6.30 and sits around for two hours doing other activities, having breakfast, obviously getting ready, and thinks about the thing that scares him the most during the day is going to school and having to be in front of his class and talk and learn. And the anxiety that that causes for him is gut-wrenching as a parent to watch. So I am so excited about the start times that happened since I heard they were a possibility because his best hours are the morning. Um, all of his teachers can attest to that. We've had a lot of meetings recently at Blue Point about him. And I don't want to make it just about my kid. I've had lots of other families in my circle of friends that also advocate for this. And um, I just think that it's important to remember that it's just because we're not speaking and, and saying, yay, yeah, go, go start time changes. We are out there supporting. There are a lot of us that are excited about it. And as a working family, I'd be able to get dropped off my kids at the bus stop when they're little, not when they're going to be in high school. Uh, when they won't want to have mom and dad at the bus stop and can't get themselves there. I, I have to be at work at 8 o'clock in the morning. I don't get to drop my kids off that often. And this, these years are precious. I, mean, I miss every minute that I don't get to spend with them in the morning. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a pediatrician. I'm not a doctor. I've read the research, but I'm not going to advocate for tell you all that information that you already know. Um, I'm just pleading to you as a parent that please know there's voices out here that are supportive of the, the start time changes um, for the younger kids as you have presented them already. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brandy Rubin, um, one Frederick Thompson Drive, uh, and I have a second grader as well as a sixth grader, so I think I'm kind of in between like two age groups. Students, um, and we really wanted to put that back on the board to be making the decision around that because I think that we could rally around any of those decisions and have those work. So 7.1 is review uh, policy IDR. I just want to draw attention to the board's uh, the board's attention to that policy because that is the one. If um, decisions are made to to change the course, this is the policy that would be needed to be changed. It currently has our um, start time and our end time for each phase level. And so that would be where we would go to make policy changes. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say? Discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, I will take um, a motion to adjourn. So moved. What? All in favor?